previously on Crossing Over with Comic Deal. Okay, so I think we'll, we'll sort of final, final sort of thoughts. What, what, what do you think? You know, where is the head and where's issue two? What is issue two for you? What do you want to see in issue two? Where do you think it's going to go? I think I, I, I like to see where they're going to go with the little girl. So I would like to see what happens, you know, to comic book characters if they're captured or whatever that is, you know. So I'd be curious to see where that goes, to be honest with you. But other than that, this story's too wide open for me to even have hazard a guess as to where it's going to go. I think it's um, left it sufficiently open that it could go in any direction, which is a plus point. You know, I, I, I didn't read it and think this is a great comic book, but I did read and think I do want to know what happens next. Yeah, I, I, I'm hoping for more character development to find out a little bit more about Ellie. Um, um, and obviously we'll find out more about the, the, is it Ryan, the preacher's son? Yeah. Issue two is probably going to slow down. We're probably going to get a lot more development in terms of Ellie and possibly the, the, the girl. They'll probably build a lot more on the world that's in the dome. She'll probably give a lot of information, I think. I would. I hope that they kind of narrow in on one or two themes instead of trying to cover almost everything in a, in a, in a comic book story. I feel like there's far too many kind of nuances that they want to kind of address, zone in on one or two of them. I think I would like to see them um, avoid the cliches that they've looked like they're kind of set up, but that could be intentional to kind of say, hey, look, this is going to happen, and then swerve into something a lot more interesting, and that's what I hope they do. If it just becomes another typical love story over, you know, forbidden love, go go watch any movie on Netflix, and it's almost the exact same storyline. But you know, that one, I, I'm hoping to be surprised. I'm hoping to be taken down a different path. And part of me thinks they will, and that's what's kind of getting me interested in reading the second issue. I, I don't reckon we'll see a wee sneak preview of uh, another character, but I think Donny Cates knows that he's going to have to put in some character from Marvel or DC to keep us wanting more. So uh, I expect to see someone. Who that will be, I'm not too sure. I want to see Howard the Duck show up, make some moves on, on Ellie because it's Howard the Duck, that's what he does. No, I think, yeah, I think for me, this issue two is probably going to slow it well down. I think it will slow it down. I think we'll get a lot more background information on, on a couple of key characters, a lot more in the world, but I don't think there's going to be anything, like Ali said, I don't think they're going to sort of bring in like Spider-Man swinging by and shooting his webs in your face. I think we'll see things from inside the dome and know what's going on in there. I'd like to thank Neil for being a fabulous guest and hope he comes back for issue two. Hi, and welcome to that episode two of Passing Over with Comic Deal. This is a brief recap video on what we discussed in the last one about issue one. And we were all hoping that Neil would make an appearance. And I have good news. He has not made an appearance. I have even better news. We have nobody who can live up to those standards. But I did rope somebody into it. So uh, what we'll do is introduce the folk who are coming in to discuss Issue two of um, Crossover on this show, which I have lovingly called Passing Over with Comic Deal. So first, we have Andy from Perpetual Comics. Hey, everybody. How's it going? How's it going, James? I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for asking. Um, my next panelist is Sean, Noob Comics. Hello, Sean. Hey, hey, peeps. I knew you guys would show up here. And um, to be the intellectual and replace Neil on this uh, stream, um, we have Scott. Hey. Hello. One, I didn't sign up to be the intellectual. I'm not sure how I feel about being roped in. It's all it's all <laughs> in the fine it's all in the fine print. Oh, yeah, how do you, you think, think we feel? Right. How do you think we feel? <laughs> but yeah, let's get let's get into it. So uh, issue two of crossover came out last week. We will discuss it. We will go into sort of details on the story. So spoiler warning, if anyone hasn't seen it, um, don't watch this. I mean, what you can do is sort of leave it on so it shows like you're watching it, but don't watch it. Just go make some a cup of tea for 40 minutes or whatever. Um, I give you the views. Um, and then come back and watch it a second time. Um, but yeah, so issue two crossover from what I've seen on, on um, sort of Instagram and stuff and from speaking to the guys, um, particularly one in, um, in particular. It's got mixed opinions on, on this issue. Um, but I think we'll just sort of go around and sort of say just very quickly, what did you make of the issue? And then we'll talk we'll talk about it more sort of as we go into it. But myself, I absolutely love this issue. I thought what they'd done with it was brilliant. And I was a big fan of it. Andy, your sort of quick hit opinion on it. I had a lot of expectations for this particular issue and 
they weren't met. Um, it was very, very slow. Um, and that's about as positive as I'm going to get today. Okay, well, we look forward to hearing your uh, your opinions on um, certain aspects of the story then. Um, Sean, sort of quick, quick snap. I pre- I'm the same with you. I preferred this one to the first one. The first one was kind of like, I thought at the end of it, I don't really, I'm not too fussed on what happens next, but this actually made me want more by the time it was finished. So, yeah, I enjoyed this a bit more. And Scott, yourself again, just sort of a quick, um, quick opinion. Yeah, uh, so uh, the first issue of any comic is always basically the same as a pilot TV show, isn't it? It's always something that grabbed you. So now we're on issue two. I feel like this is the kind of speed that we should be expecting and we will be going along for the rest of the series. But yeah, like like you and James, there were some really cool things. Uh, you and Sean, sorry. Uh, some really cool things in this that I was uh, happy to see and I'm looking forward to seeing where this kind of stuff goes and develops. Well, that's it for no, I'm wishing. Um, so yeah, no, that's great. Well, we'll go in, like I said, we'll go into more detail under the nitty gritty on this. We're just have a look and see who is joining us today in the comments. We have Phil from Comics Gaming Figures. He's only here to listen to Scott's voice. Does he want me to say humble bundle again? Or? Yes. Oh, yes, please. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know what I like when, when budding romances form over the internet? It's, it's amazing. Um, we have Farhawk with us um nope haven't missed anything important and <laughs> to be honest you probably won't um <laughs> and who else is in here we have um dean from the nerd or comic book club um it's good that yeah it's, it's sort of scott's home away from home and um we'll just bother we him. We'll give you a oh, and stick, no. we also have sanchez and i who's the who's neil who's on the last um episode and he's watching from his sick bed probably means he's told work he's sick but he's in uh, the burby us or something yeah. get well soon Neil. we miss you yes yeah, get well soon Neil. well this will you we'll see how scott performs okay so <laughs> that's what she said it's it's <laughs> let's talk about art so i know last time we said sort of jeff shaw he knows what he's doing he's an accomplished artist and um you know there was never going to be bad art how do we think the art was or evolved or or took took form in in um Issue two. Andy, go. Yeah, I'll, I'll kick off. Um, the the art for me was was as consistent as it was with issue one. Um, it's one of the highlights of the book, I think, so far. Um, I think it, it can definitely see that that Jeff's getting to play with a, a lot of characters that he wouldn't normally be able to to draw. Um, so it looks as if he's having a lot of fun with it, and it's really complemented by the. The, the colours as well, which what I'm sure we'll get into in a, a, a wee bit more detail. But yeah, definitely the consistency was there and it, and it you know, kept, kept the bar high. I wasn't disappointed with that at all. Um, Scott? Yeah, it's on par with, you know, everything that we saw in issue one. Um, it's, it's yeah, it's really good to see that he is, like, having fun with those other characters. Although all we saw of, like, you know, DC and Marvel superheroes was, like, their arms or cuffs and stuff like that when they were in that uh, prison. But it's all just, yeah, I love it. Like, I, I've, I really, I'm really enjoying the fact that they're doing more of that kind of dot matrix style with the, with the comic universe characters as well. And yeah, everything just looks high quality and, and nice and just, yeah, it's just, it's just good, man. Sean, what about yourself? How did you find the art? Yeah, it, it, it hasn't improved since the first one, but it's still on par with that. So it, I still enjoyed it. It's still good. I like the fact that it's not like other comic books. It's not too cluttered. So, and then obviously signaling back to what a couple of you lads have said about, you know, with the additional characters, you know, with the superheroes in the background, the silhouettes of them, the arms coming through, you know, where they're in bars. Um, and then obviously, yes, the dot matrix with the, the comic book characters themselves. So. Yeah, it's 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 just on par with what it is. It's not gotten any better, but it's definitely not gotten any worse. So yeah, yeah. I think um, for for myself, I'd sort of sort of noted down that I thought that the art in this issue was um, was fantastic because at the, as as it sort of boils down, it's just a lot of exposition. It's a lot of talking heads, but I think Jeff is able to Jeff like like he's my mate. Um, Jeff Shaw has been able to. Um, Sort of put it down on paper in a way that made it interesting. It made every panel sort of interesting. There's something to sort of sort of catch your eye or look at on every panel. And and you know at the end of the day, it is heavy on exposition. It is heavy on just you know 
characters just vomiting out the plot and um from an art perspective it's probably hard to, to imagine how you're going to put that on on page and i think jeff's done a fantastic jeff shaw's done a fantastic job with it um again as everyone said the coloring you know um it's fantastic um you know they're still doing the sort of different um sort of panels that you know again on this issue there's a few panels that are completely um blue um i don't quite know what the significance of that is yeah, yet why is that yeah, I, I noticed it was um, whenever he goes into it's Nathaniel Pendleton's office, the the Fed, the head at Fed, it's all orange, and the only time it turns blue is whenever it's the narrator, whoever that is, is talking about him in the third person, and the parts where yeah. he's shown going to the the prison cell to get the letter as well, that was just all blue. So it seems that anything that was in the office when it was focusing around him it was just all orange. Everything else was blue for him. So I think it's just sort of signal, signifying how important he is as a character, or where his position is. That's yeah, just what I think it is very heavy on on the sort of um, blue tones and and those sort of the, you know the cool blue tones and then the warm sort of orange tones um, throughout the issue. And yeah, you, you're right. The, the sort of issues that are just um, some of them that are just narration are those ones that are just colored in blue. And, um, you know, I've, I've been trying to think what that signified. I th I thought last issue was about sort of maybe there were the panels that slowed the story down, but on this one, it is more of a slow paced one. So, you know, I don't know, is it significant? Maybe I'm it's sure some it's sort of happening. like, um, maybe it's some sort of character in the superhero kind of universe and they're able to see this kind of stuff because you have that, um, you have that what that character that kind of can tell the future, and it maybe it's something to do with that guy, and he's seeing this stuff, um, and that blue just signifies, yeah, this is what this guy is. Their perspective, yeah. yeah, it's very possible. Um, yeah. And then I think the final thing on the art that I want to say is that big splash page. You know, we had a great splash page in the first issue with the, you know the sort of one of the opening shots of the, of the the dome or the um, uh, what would you call that force field, um, and yeah. this issue. Sort of prison that first sort of prison scene um big wide angle shot looking down in the prison you know we see lots of cameos lots of hands in there we have um scott Schuller up there and um yeah and, um yeah it was uh very well done um and the uh sort of lettering as well the way the lettering was laid out just sort of draw your eye from top left to right down to the bottom right um very well done um, and Andy, you had pointed out that that was an homage that, for, that the, the for, for the jail. Um, yeah. 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 The, the, um, I think it was mentioned in one of the other videos I was watching uh, earlier on today. Um, in Spawn issue 10, um, Todd McFarlane drew a similar sort of panel. And I'm just wondering if it was taken from that. Um, so that, that that was kind of a, a, a kind of a up yours to Marvel and, and DC at that particular time, just before Image had moved over. Um, a crossing over, if you will. Um, so yeah, d definitely have a look at that. Did you yeah. did you manage to take to take that panel so we could show everybody? Or um, no, I had the uh, I had the other panel. I had was um... this no <laughs> that one. Yeah, that one. So, yeah, yeah. So there's that one. Um, the the page the before that. that yeah, that, that double page. page. Yeah, that is sponsor. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, that double page spread that Scott sort of showed up. That one. Um, even the ladder in round the corner is very similar to what was in that spawn ten as well. The way they did that, so I think that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Any any other sort of anyone else want to pitch in on the art, and then we can sort of move on. Yeah, I, I'm just going to maybe jump in on the colours again. You were talking about yes. the orange reds, so the, the the sort of office and stuff like that. I kind of took from that that D was trying to emphasise, you know, the the danger of that office because just beforehand it was kind of those light blues, and it was like kind of a tranquil setting, and then it moved into the the danger of the office, and even the colours. Yeah, it was kind of like giving that intense vibe. Um, I think that was that was definitely portrayed in, in the colours that they used. And also the, the splash page that Scott was showing there, uh, that was kind of a dull and lifeless. Um, so very, I, very I, blue, yeah. Yeah, so it kind of, a, I think he's de he definitely uses that colour really well just to sort of emote those feelings um, and emphasise what, what, what obviously um, uh, the story's trying to say. 
can we can we talk about the stuff that's in his office? Can does that count as yes, the please? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know, right there, it goes sort of little got that. tidbits got in that there. Um, um, I don't throw through this bad boy up here. Um, I think the only one I definitely know is like Hank Pym's like Ant Man helmet in the in the in the top in the top left. But everything else, I'm not a hundred percent. I don't. Is that like Spider Man web shooter in the in the bottom in the bottom, bottom right? right? Yeah. Be um, there. Yeah, yeah. But then everything um, else, I'm not too sure on. So I think her Star Lord's helmet up beside. Thank you. Yeah, I thought that. Um, that's what that looks like. And then I think I said the Andy as well below that. Possibly is that meant to be the baby Groot? Yeah. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Um, and then potentially there could be kryptonite in the in the box. Yeah. Like a star of kryptonite in this sort yeah. of. It was that there, James, that we were talking about earlier. I don't know if you can see it there, but the Illuminati, yeah, the Illuminati <laughs> thing as well. Yeah, kind of Department of Truth esque. Yeah, we're going to the Department of Truth for it. I think it was sort of, I sort of suggested possibly it's like Doctor Strange, sort of eye of yeah. like a memoir or whatever it's and called. And then, and then, what is that left of that even more? Is that like a sword or like some sort of just hanging cloth? You know what I mean? What is that? Yeah, you know what? I never one? noticed that. But I know Donny Cates and, and um, Sir Jeff Shaw have been putting a lot of swords and a lot of books. So I know Thor had sort of swords from God Country and things like that. So it could possibly yeah. be there. Yeah. I don't even notice that, to be honest. It's yeah, no, I didn't notice it until you said it, Scott. Yeah. Scott the Swordsman. <laughs> um, that sort of purple thing up at the top. I've been recommending trying to find out what that is, and uh, it's because it's quite prominent, and I just it's hard to make out what that is. The only thing I can kind of maybe guess it could be like the Infinity Gauntlet, but that's yeah. I don't think it is, mm. but that's the closest thing I can guess to it. It's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's yeah, I, I could see that, yeah, but, but that's the, no, the book throughout it though, because it, it's like the splash page. You could sit and spend twenty minutes on it, just analyzing those pages to see yeah. what characters were or what you know references to different comic books there is in, and it's probably dotted throughout not just the pages we're looking at now, but throughout the yeah. whole comic, and we don't realize it, you know. So, and yeah. and, and do you, and do you think the the uh, the long boxes he's got on the floor is that full of files or is that full of comics? <laughs> could could be comics. a bit of both. Yeah, I'm thinking it's probably a bit of both. Yeah, extensive paperwork and then some comics because he has some comics on his desk as well, doesn't he? Like yeah, on the next page, um, in the in the top right panel, he's got like, yeah, there's definitely like a com like two comics there on his desk. Yeah, looks like two, two kind of makes sense. Yeah, well, I think having comics for somebody like him would kind of make sense if he's capturing the supers because he wants to know about them and more better to get the information than comic books themselves. Yeah, of course. Yeah, do we think that was a, a sort of writer's decision? Do you think it's Donny Cates saying, I want this here, this here, and this here? Or do you think um, Jeff Shaw was like, yeah, I'm just going to put these in? And um, I'd say it's Jeff Shaw, 100%. You reckon, I think yeah. Just running um, wild. Yeah. Maybe it's maybe it's a bit of both because you know obviously Donnie's got this idea about where the story is going and you know they must be working you know talking together about what's coming up and stuff. So maybe you know maybe it's like you know one or two things on the shelf are related to what Donnie wants, but then the rest is just Jeff just going yeah we'll have that we'll have that we'll have that. <laughs> Who knows? See what you can get away with. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's definitely like Sean said. It's definitely an issue where there's a lot of a lot of sort of things thrown in there for um, for uh, just for for the fans to see. And you know, a lot of people are um, saying that uh, you know they expect to see superheroes in this book, and you know they they I yeah. think you know I know in the chat last time people were saying if if there isn't a big reveal, you know they're going to be disappointed. And I wonder if this is there sort of like you know sort of nudge nudge wink wink. Here's here's your superheroes, but they're all in jail. Yeah. I think was was Dandy. You said in the last one, you think that the comic book characters are just going to be fillers. They'll just be background more than anything else. It's soft nods to them rather than being prominent within the comic itself, being actual characters that will yeah. feature in it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I just don't know how how they're going to pull it off and how they'd be allowed to do it. You know, mm -hmm. um, I think I think I said in uh, the last episode that. You know, and if anybody can, it's going to be it's going to be Donny Cates. But I just don't see how they could pull it off legally and otherwise. <laughs> yeah. Do you think? Images. Do you think image? You know, just image characters is going to be enough for people. 
if it's no. just the likes of, of Spawn and Invincible so. things that no. we see from it. No. I, I mean, think if there's going to be a character that's going to pop up in it, um, and one of the you know, me and one's a cat, it'll be the one that whoever it is that's in that cage that's protecting the future. So I think it'll be whoever that is. <clears throat> Personally, I think it's maybe Doctor Strange or somebody along those lines, if it's somebody who sees the future. But and then obviously you've got the strange thing that's in the office as well. So but that's just my sort of perspective mm -hmm. on it. Well, let's move into the story then. Um and, and see where that takes us. Um very interested to hear sort of opinions on it. So f myself, um you know, it's definitely a change of pace from issue one. Issue one, I thought issue one crammed a lot into it, but did it in a really good sort of fast pace. Whereas this one has crammed even more into it, but slowed it right down, um, which I enjoyed. It was it was a good read. It's it was a good way to read. Like I said, all the exposition that they're throwing of us because now you know we understand more about um, the world. You know, because I know issue one. Um, we think okay there's a dome superheroes are inside and they're trying to escape and now you know we, we've learned there's a few sort of key points so we've learned that the dome wasn't put up you know straight up by by them when they um arrived you know um there was comic book characters got out before the dome came so the dome trapped some of them but there's some that have got out which is an interesting um fact um, she wasn't trapped in the in the dome and she didn't escape from the dome she was in the, the, the camps which you know is a sort of a huge you know you could say on that on um sort of i guess comparison to you know sort of the united states and their um uh how do you say that prison camps yeah sort of um camps for refugees and um you know um People jump on the borders and stuff like that. Um, well, they, they, and things. They've done that. They've done that with the, the kids. They? They've done that with the kids. They, they threw them on to and they separated them from their parents. So it's kind of a yeah. It's kind of a yeah. like that. Though, so, but yeah, no, I thought it was good stuff. I thought yeah. there was there was enough being thrown into this issue that was that like um sort of Firehawk said in the comments there it was really good um sorry story story building um um yeah any Andy. Yeah, I mean, as I say, I, I thought it was quite slow. It started off really well. I thought it was really cool at the start when it was like, um, you know, uh, Brian K. Vaughan was, you know, killed and stuff like that. And then it sort of is like someone narrating to say that that's going to be part of the second story arc, you know, so it kind of uh, get, sets you up for that. Um, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, I think somebody mentioned in the comments, I can't remember who it was, but that they potentially you know. misspelled um brian k vaughn's name but i don't know if that was intentional or not but um, i don't even know how you spell it to be fair um, i think it's like yeah Vo vohan like yeah but from a, a story perspective yeah I, I i guess it's just i was expecting something different and, and it, 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 it took me three or four weeks to actually appreciate some of the content um but i'm just imagining if it wasn't for the art and if it wasn't for the mm -hmm. If it wasn't for the color, would I have been as interested? And I guess if it wasn't for Donny Cates writing it, would I have cared? Would I have even looked at buying issue three? Um, I think a little bit like you, James, you said like the the, the sort of it was all, almost like a homage to um, America and, and the world, I guess, as to you know if you if you if you you you, you love um, you know. If you who you choose to love and you know people of different color and um, races and all that sort of stuff um we treat them differently and and it's kind of a like a, a look into our world from a comic book because it's like you know the superheroes of have appeared and they're all getting thrown into concentration camps or prisons and things like that um and yeah um i thought it was a lot to take in uh it takes you a few weeks to to understand what it's all about but again it was just a little bit too slow for me scott how do you, how do you follow that um i think this this story is broken up into like four or five chunks isn't it it's like you've you've got the fact that it, it raises um well it brings to light that real life writers exist in this world so like you know how is that gonna unfold and then um and then uh, is it Ryan, his name is, isn't it? And then, so you know, the, that's I think that's one of the biggest developments, uh, character developments for this story is is Ryan, 
his chat with uh, that. Uh, who was who was that? Um, kind of... Pendleton, um, Nathaniel Abrams Pendleton. Pendleton. Yeah, he special was the, director. yeah special director. Yeah, so the whole the whole chat with him and just the kind of mission he's been given there. So it's 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 become just this like gone from like the silly mistake that he's made with his not even religious father, um, who's religious but not religious, and then. Um, and then going from into this meeting with a special director, being told you're this special guy. I don't know why. I don't care. Just you've been chosen. Go and deal with it. Here's this gun with, I'm assuming, kryptonite in the bullet, or or like the power dampening stuff. And then you know you've you've got the fact that the um, the heroes uh, and, and probably villains have all been uh, not all, but majoritively have been captured and and then you know and then you've got the camps and it's just you know there's yes the book is slow but i enjoyed it 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 felt like um uh, it felt mature to me mm. um in the way that it read and um even but even though they had all these massive uh things going on and starting and setting up it was it was still it wasn't too fast paced. It was just enough, you know. This this book is quite dialogue heavy, mm. but it's not so heavy that I'm, I'm like Jesus. Um, but you know, it's great. And then and then obviously you've got the thing at the end then with Ava, with her um, whatever eye power she has. Like <laughs> I'm assuming it's some sort of lasers. Or I don't know. I don't know what it is, but this is kind it's of like eyes. Yeah, it's kind of like purpley pinky mist coming out of her eyes after you see this rat has just dissolved on the floor but yeah so much happens and i'm really enjoying it and i'm looking forward to what's coming next scott you were you were saying about the, the dialogue and it's quite yeah. heavy the, the one thing that i found quite difficult not just the all the dialogue but the fact, the fact that it was written in such a way where it was sort of stop start so you know very it was very rare that any of the characters actually finished a sentence especially at the start of it there was lots of those little dot dot dots you know throughout it um yeah and i get I don't, I don't. I guess there's a reason for that, but it, I guess with all the dialogue that was in there, it was quite hard to understand. And when it got to, I think it was just a lot, a lot of convenience in the comic. So it was convenient that he walks into this office and all of a sudden he's 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 been set to go on this task, and there's a gun with a bullet in it with something in it. And I just thought, and then the letter as well. What what was? Yeah, I was confused with the letter. You know what? What was that about? And what well, was that's, this? That's from the guy, isn't it? The yeah, yeah, um, telling guy. I, I guess. I, I guess it's only the, the second issue, so um, I should cut yeah, it's, that exactly. Part. Like I've, I've always <laughs> thought that the second issue is always where the story starts. The first mm. issue is literally just a hook. Like you've seen the first yeah, issue. Yeah, you've seen the potential of the story. You see what could happen. You're like, right, I'm in. Let's get issue two, and then that's where the work starts for. The writer and the artist they've really got to try and grab your attention and like yeah. you know some people it's worked some people it hasn't and um but yeah i'm i'm it's worked for me there is definitely a lot of sort of um points that's been made here in regards to the overall story that um you know i think is ever you know, like i said it leaves everybody guessing you know what 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 is this um like the power dampeners you know and the the bullet you know i think the first thought everyone have is kryptonite but mm. yeah I, th I think it's why, the green would, glow that gives it off yeah but then why exactly. would kryptonite affect anyone outside of krypton do you know what i mean why would yeah, that dampen yeah. everybody's anybody's power um why does it not dampen the person who is able to give them the details Mm -hmm. you know, the, whoever this uh, sort yeah. of psychic we assume would be a psychic character which could be you know anybody um sean was that your sort of thought as well was it immediately was it i think that's kryptonite but hang on what no my, my thought or I, I don't know what the power thing is is dampening well what it is it's causing the parts to be dampened but in reference to what you're saying about the the story and how it's sort of materializing as it goes along i think it's set at the perfect pace because and sort of touching what Andy said about where it sort of stop start. I think it actually sets it quite well because if you think about it like a TV show, it's scenes. So as you're cutting through, you're going you're going to scenes with like Ellie and the I forget his name for the comic book owner. Then oh, you're going to the prison. Yeah, you're going to the prison. So then you've got the 
your guy walking down with the, the police officer and the Fed going into the special agent's office. That's the scene. Then it's cut, it's going back to Eliva and Otto. Um, and then it's obviously at the end you've got, so I think it's just, if you think of it like a TV show, I think it's actually quite well structured and let out. There's not too much in any one scene either, where it's sort of, it's like um, Scott said, yes, it's dialogue heavy, but I didn't find it like other comics I've sometimes read, um, where there's far too much and you just get overloaded and sometimes you don't know where to read from. It's structured in such a way that, and this is credit to the writing, where it's laid out, it's like you said, the splash page, it's laid out in such a way to make you look around the page and things like that. But story-wise, um, no, I've enjoyed the story. I, I think it's really well paced. The every time I get a question answered, it opens up another question. So, for example, like in the last episode, I said I want to know what happens with the characters. You know, the comic book characters. You know, and now I know they're put into like these camps, and you know they're kept prisoner there, and they've got these donors to stop any powers from obviously occurring. But it's also interesting to see that they're also being experimented on and some of them are being returned and they're different. So is that different as in they've now got powers where they didn't have powers before or is it just different that they've modified their behavior? Um, and also some not coming back. And the reason why I say that is linking into what Ava said um, that she and her family, she's are known powers, but at the end she's exhibiting powers. So is it one, she's been experimented on, she's got the powers or two, is she lying? <laughs> So that for me sort of keeps me intrigued and it opens up. But when I'm looking at the end of that book, I'm like, I want to know. So that for me keeps me engaged in that story. I really enjoyed it. I like I like the TV show kind of aspect that you gave on it, like the splitting it up into scenes. And I think even though there's a lot of dialogue in the book, it kind of having those kind of, you know, it, it's sectioned off more or less that makes it easier to read like if we if we had you know one whole scene for the whole book and with that much dialogue it would be i, I feel like it would drag um, be but because it was split up into like you know um four five six page chunks uh mm -hmm. it's it's you know it's keeping your attention it's shifting your focus and i think it's yeah quite good at keeping that yeah. yeah, it was very dialogue heavy, but I think it. I thought it read well. It, um, it read quickly. Um, it flowed across the page very well. There was, um, like Andy said, a lot of sort of the dot 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 inter you know, characters interrupting each other, but I think that you know it, it, that's just for me. That is um, good. Good dialogue. That's um, you know that's how people speak. That's how people you know interrupt each other, except on this show where it was Blight and Wits their turn. Um, but yeah, it's. Um, I, I thought, you know, very, like I said, very dialogue heavy. There was a lot they were getting across in, in through the dialogue, and I thought they did it really well. Um, so I'm going to touch on the sort of the, the, the camps and some of the charm brought up as well about the experimentation. It's very, you know, it, it's it's almost very concentration camp, um, sort of, you know, sort of a Nazi scenario there where, you know, there, there's people who are different or they deem to be different from them, and, and they're carrying out... Um, there were a lot of experimentations on it. Um, something that I sort of took away when Sean was talking through it as well was the, uh, are they trying to take the powers as well from the characters? Or is this some mm -hmm. of their experiment on to trying to take the powers to maybe build something to fight against the uh, the remaining heroes who I assume are going to be, you know, by now they're probably going to be anti-government. Yeah. You know what I mean? Possibly. Possibly. Some some nice sort of taken away from it. Um, yeah, it's definitely. I thought it was definitely a good twist about the being camps. You know, I thought when I first yeah. read about the camps, I was like, oh, you know, is this going to be too on the nose to sort of mm -hmm. real life? But you know what? I actually, I'm going to say, I enjoyed concentration camps, but I, I sort of enjoyed that sort of different twist or that aspect of it. You know, it's just adding more depth, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's sort of adding another sort of. Um, sort of sub i guess you could say a subplot where you know it's not straight to the dome you know we've now yeah. got one character who is going to go straight to the dome we've now got ellie and otto who are going to you know check out these camps and, and, and try to help um ava which we learned her name was ava quinn um to uh sort of save their parents for there um i think ellie has sort of revealed as well that was, i know last episode as well sean you and you were sort of in the camp that ellie's parents are alive they're trapped and i thought 
when she had said, you know, that, that they're gone, that they were dead. But from what she said, she doesn't know. So there's a good chance that they're obviously going to head into the dome as well. Um, so a couple of other things there as well. The um, the scene with Ryan and um, special director Nathaniel Abrams Pendleton. <laughs> um, before I go into it, was anybody else Googling these names to see if they had any relevance? Uh, no. I Googled Ava Quinn. Uh, yeah, so did I. <laughs> um, so. um, but yeah, so I, I thought that was that one. Um, it's because she likes to be a superhero, I guess. Cosplay. Did anybody do like um, spot the superhero whenever they had the, the the splash page that you were showing, Scott, and also the close oh, yes. up of like Spawn's arms and stuff like that? Did, did that anybody manage to pick out every superhero that was there? There was a few that I. Yeah, there's, like, a, oh, there's a few I couldn't get. Yeah, like obviously you've got Batman there, and like I think Wonder Woman next to him, yeah. and I think that this that big arm over here, I think that maybe the thing, the thing, yeah, this, yeah. This thing here, or, or like I don't know, maybe Clayface. Um, no, I think that's that's definitely the thing. We've got Black yeah. Panther down the bottom row. Wonder Woman's there. Oh yeah, Black Panther. I I thought I took that as like um like Captain Cold or something. Mm, uh, possibly, but uh, yeah, I would be in the yeah. sort of Black Panther camp yeah, for yeah. sure. I, I, I agree with you there, to be honest. Um, it's, but it's yeah, it's kind of where the way it's been drawn as well. It's like Jeff, Jeff Shaw is obviously not want to draw it perfect, so that it's so people are having these conversations. I guess it's like, oh, is it this character? Yeah. Is it that character? Keep keep the that, imagination. Yeah. Going? I have like, no idea. It... Sorry, oh, go ahead. Uh, I have no idea on the on the right to like the purple arms with the yellow. Wristbands are. I thought they're yeah. purple or blue, but they're too thin. Yeah, too too thin. No, it's yeah. definitely not thin. It's not. No. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know of any other sort of purple. Anyone in the comments? Are they? Uh, no, I'm giving their suggestion. GP Venom says right. Captain Cold. Captain Cold. He thinks it was Captain Cold. Okay. I, no, no, Harold the Duck. No. <laughs> Uh, not yet. He's too not good, yet. man. They can't catch him. They can't catch him. Uh, any female, any um, purple females characters you would know? Because I think it looks like that purple has sort of long hair. Just long hair, you know. Starfire? Or, or long hair. No, Starfire. I thought about... No, she's I was, she's I was orange. Say, Sorry, yeah, she's orange. Sorry. A little bit like Lobo, but it's maybe... No, I don't think Lobo has yellow. He's not that purple either, is he, Lobo? Yeah, true. Who knows? Who yeah, we'll, we'll probably never find out either. Yeah, probably right. not. The, no, the next then, page, where, whenever you see Spawn's arm, which is obviously quite clear, then you've got yeah. Spider-Man, um, and then you've got yeah. Ghost Rider, I believe. Uh, like that, um, yeah. No who that other one is after Ghost Rider. Dead Man? No. I think I'm getting my colours mixed up. Oh, he's red. He's all red. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Thanos behind that one, possibly. Yeah. And then I think at the very mm -hmm. end there, behind the Thanos-ish one, uh, for me, it looked like um, Captain Marvel, like her kind of yeah. red. It's got that, red. It's got that look about it, hasn't it? I was thinking more yeah. on the lines of vision for that one. Yeah. Like, that's the thing, isn't it? Who knows? Like, you know, well, are they being did your pick. on purpose? Yeah. And, you know, again, are we ever going to find out? Um, but I think it's sort of a cool thing to put in there as well. It sort of gives yeah. something for, for the, the peoples like us to um, to look into and, and sort of say, oh, that's nice. And, and then I think as well, being a nice, uh, you know, um, uh, a homage to, to Spawn issue 10 as well, um, mm -hmm. you know, the early days of Image sort of almost bring a full circle. And there has been, um, there's a variant cover for, for a future yes. issue of Spawn. Standing right behind um, mm -hmm. Ellie with the badass of Todd, Todd McFarland gives his drawn. Um, that looks that looks great. So, you know, if you're going to slap Spawn right on the cover, you know, we may, you know, are we going to see more Spawn? Yeah. Don, um, Donny Cates did. Donny Cates did say, you know, to all the retailers, he put out a tweet. I think it was to say, if there's any issue that you double up on, it's you, all the retailers have to buy issue three because that's when it's going to. You know, there's something yeah, going to happen. We're saying, actually, yeah. Um, 
we can actually touch that in a minute because there are the, the first three pages of issue three are out as preview. And cool. um, there are um, a couple of big reveals on, 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 the, on the start of that. Um, I think it's freely available to sort of just bring up on the images website as well. Um, a couple of other things that's right. Spot, spot out what? I thought you were going to show it then and spoil it. So did I? I was like, no, 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 no and um i sort of brought it out, like in the star system thingy what's that called stars in the sky and um, there's orion, <laughs> orion and that's sort yeah. of three stars like almost like the three dots very similar to the sort of motif we're seeing throughout the issue yeah yeah um, that does blow yeah, my mind a lot about it's on the front page isn't it you know the three the yeah, three dots yeah, there. Is, I mean, there's, yeah. which know, is her, the, uh, her her name too so you know yeah there's definitely you know i don't know if that's again intentional or if i'm just thinking about people's belts too much but there's definitely um <laughs> for me that seems like there, there was some, possibly something there um um and then what else is a reveal so yeah scott you touched on it as well about sort of his his father so we said he's father though but he's not ordained and he's just like a gun nut um, yeah. semi-religious complex possibly yeah um so to me it's sort of rather like okay so this guy's probably got a compound similar to waco or something like that and how is that then going to tie in you know to to this sort of whole um scenario are they gonna you know go on uh like well, we've always seen them burn out a comic shop are they going to then take it further and start trying to hunt down and yeah uh, of these comic book characters who are who are in the in the real world because now we know there's a lot more people a lot more yeah. potential of them being out there than, than in the dome because like i said the dome came down um after they all came so james see the page where you're talking about but it's it, you it gets revealed that his name's orion there's yes. a part there's a panel there where he's sort of looking down and he says um it was something to do with his father had talked that he'd become a shepherd a hunter and that sort of got my mind going as to what what that could actually mean. You know, it's obviously it, it kind of becomes he's going to become a hunter because he's taking this gun to go and yeah. do something. You know, yeah, and, so. possibly. And uh, like what you know, again touching on that, the shepherd. You know, what what they are they heard them heard them in the cages. Well, they're already in cages. Is this going to be another sort of subsection of, of that? Could be leading them away. Yeah, kind of like Moses, kind of like kind of like Moses. Yeah, who yeah, like you got to blow my mind? My mind, <laughs> I suddenly like this issue. <laughs> and are we, are we for, for more religious subtext? That, and again, we touched on this in issue one about the yeah. whole mm. sort of God hates capes. Um, you know, are we getting more into the, the sort of religious? You know, there's probably a religious subtext to this as well. That, um, oh, that's out, yeah, too deep for me to. To get into, but I uh, <laughs> smarter than me can can probably elaborate on. Um, Where's your brother? Is he in the chat? Maybe he'll. He's either sick. He's either sick or on holiday. Um, <laughs> but yeah, a couple more guys popped in the chat there while we we're chatting away. GP Phantoms in there. Wait. Wait. Uh, Wait. We've got Luke Pyro Collectibles as well, who's been building oh. dioramas. Dioramas. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen the uh, photos of those dioramas. They look good. Oh, I've look seen cool. the little ones. Yeah, they look looking good. So, Ava Quinn then, um, big reveal that she has powers, as we touched on. Um, yep, has yep, she been yep. using powers as part of this sort of experimentation? That she always had powers, and is she lying to potentially not be sort of frightened or you know frightened off um, Ellie and uh, Otto? Yeah, we, we, we'd say that. We'd say in the last episode, did we not? That she might be. I wonder if she's like Superman's daughter. Um, and and the last panel was the panel that sort of made me want to buy issue three. Um, obviously she zaps the the rat, and you see the yep, yeah, that's the one. She you see that she's obviously got some sort of powers, but interestingly, I get again, it, it potentially might be a little bit of another homage to um, Superman's son 
um, killed a cat when he his pearls get revealed. Yeah. So it's kind of a, like there's a link there between the two. So I think it would be too <laughs> obvious if she was super Superman's sort of daughter. I want to make a point about the art there, though. If you look at the way she's holding herself, it's almost like she's comfort comforting herself or she's not sure what's going on. So maybe it's it's completely new power that she's she not... She can't control it. Yeah. She probably can't control it. I want yeah. I, I wanted to kind of touch on that kind of like emotional like body language thing that she's going on there because it, it it seems like she is aware of it but she's just like either ashamed uncomfortable yeah. conflicted that kind of thing and you know I think she's just not like happy with herself you know what I mean it's just like oh geez I've just done this like again you know n like now what's gonna happen um and it's just yeah you know is is this is this the um uh result of some experimentation and you know like, is she just is she ashamed and embarrassed and just yeah it's a bit of a it's a bit of a juxtaposition between how like cute she's apparently and you know uh, she's just a little girl and stuff like that and then yeah she's obviously got a little, little bit of an evil streak whether it's controlled evil or whether she actually meant it and she's ashamed as you say it's like the, the the sort of the purpleness of it you know, which is completely, I was like completely different, but it, obviously it's a different shade than red for what we know from Superman. Um, and that sort of smoky effect that's coming off. I mean, I don't read an awful lot of Superman, but I've never seen that in a Superman book before mm. where we sort of see that. So it yeah. could be completely different. <laughs> to look at. Um, I think on the, the page before, which we don't have, uh, you know, where she's sort of in, in the shadows and we see her eyes glow that red. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought it was a great, great little panel. Um, no, there we do. There we go. Yeah, that's so, one. Yeah. Um, great little panel. Um, and then there's this sort of um, narration on that is of what if she's a mutant? Because again, potentially, you know, she would probably be off, you know, that age where the mutant powers start coming through. Um, and you know, there's a chance maybe that, that she's some sort of mutant, or that, like you said, she's been experimented on and she's been given a, a sort of smorgasbord of. Uh, Bars. She um, she could be a host potentially because you know that that sort of smoky effect could be either whatever it is that killed the rat uh, going back in to her or leaving her sort of thing. So like she could be a, yeah. yeah she could be a host of some sort. Yeah, uh, and then that's the thing we don't know if it's if it was beamed. You know, I think that the first assumption because of the sort of um, tease of Superman last issue. Yeah, yeah. Beams, but it could it could be you know sort like um, psychic power telekinesis the. You know, like a sort of scanner's job, which just blows the thing up with her with her mind, um, and it, it you know so it makes her eyes smoke. That 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 panel that you're showing, Scott, um, of Ava's eyes sort of glowing, it's like it's another like huge thumbs up to to D and the the, the coloring of this. It kind of it's literally glowing yeah. from the page. You know? awesome. I get such that such, such a good panel as well. You know. Um, there's so much that they're doing on that you know we've got our half her face in shadow you know so we know she's sort of i think that sort of conveys the sort of she's almost like you said possibly ashamed of what she can do mm -hmm. uh, so she's sort of coloring back into the shadow and then that like you said the coloring and that sort of glowing in the eyes is just top top notch from um, from being up for sure it's like it's like if you look at the you know the two panels above that she's looking like scared of this rat and you know yeah. if you look at her body language compared to how she's holding herself in that next panel then with, with her eyes all glowing it's as if like right something else has kicked in and then this you know she's scared this thing is like a fight the fight or flight kind of thing is kicked in and then it's gone over to the next page and she's like ah oh, you know I've just done that. I can't believe I've just done that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, that's that's what I'm taking from it anyway. Yeah. So overall, then just to sort of summarize on this on the story and your thoughts on the story for myself, I thought it, it was like I said. I thought it was um, it was definitely a change of pace from last issue. I thought they've crammed managed to cram more information into this issue, but have paced it so well. Um, like Sean said, the back and forth between the, the sort of different plots that we're seeing develop. Um, Worked for me, made it an easy read, enjoyable read. Like I said, I, I just loved it from page one to page whatever the last one. It was um, <laughs> I, I really I didn't think it matter. I, I thought it was really really good. I thought the you know introducing the new character, um, the the special director, uh, was very interesting. I thought the twists that they're putting in it straight away on this issue with you know. Because we didn't know what was going to happen with Ryan at you know last issue. We didn't know what, what was happening, and all of a sudden. 
he's almost been brought out like this neo character, which is actually something we haven't touched on. This this person, this this psychic, mm. we think who has given them this mission. On the letter, sir, on the letter it says, "Say hi to Ellie for me." So they know, based on that, that they're going to meet somewhere in in, in the dome, and and we know they're hinting at this love story that that's yeah. going to develop. Um, and for me, that's like I, I like them because like okay. It seems like they're pushing in that direction, but I'm sure they're going to throw some some crazy in there. Um, but yeah, you know, we know nothing about this this psychic, and that's intriguing me even more. Yeah, yeah the letter confused me. Good. Yeah, I think it, and I think it's meant to. Um, mm. Maybe not because it's not meant to confuse, because we just don't know enough about it. It's just meant to be intriguing. Yeah, 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 I'm, yeah, I'm more yeah. and then confused. Um, but yeah, overall. For- um, I, I love this issue from from every every single panel, even the adverts at the back. <laughs> okay, so the opposite. I didn't love every panel of it. Um, <laughs> I thought, as I say, it was slow um, and confusing in parts. I think any comic that I have to read three or four times mm-hmm. to understand and and get little snippets of it. Um, I, I, I don't really want to do that for every comic. So that that was a challenge for me. Um, I thought the highlights were Spawn was in it. Um, I think the highlights were uh, these coloring again. You know, it, it's it's nothing that, like I've seen before. You know, I think we, we we never sort of talked about this panel either when they're, they're staring at the dome. Yeah. I mean, the yeah, sunlight nice. is oh, just it's perfection, really. Um, the artwork we said was was on point, but I just it, there was nothing in it that I kind of hadn't seen before in other stories or anything like that. There was nothing super new. Um, and it's just a lot of, oh, that's pretty cool, you know, looking at, like I, I was less interested in the story and more in the panels to see what was up in the shelves in the office, what was in Otto's room um, and checking to see in the jail to see what other characters. Yeah. It, was, it was just all little teasing things. and Just Easter um, eggs, isn't it? And so it is, yeah, it's like, a, it's like a book of Easter eggs, absolutely. That's, that's, um, what, I, that's what I don't get, though, because um, I'm going to counterpoint your point with... You're saying it's you know it doesn't do anything new and, and that's why you know you, you you thought it was all right but um at first read you, you hated it um it's a strong word yeah, maybe you, you very strongly disconnected um but then you you liked King and Black which for me is the complete opposite King of Black is doing absolutely nothing new it is old ground big event superheroes together big bad they're they're you know facing trouble and you know to kill off one of the characters like for me that's by the numbers event book this completely different and uh for me completely unique i guess to counter your counterpoint no i think <laughs> well, you're compare, the same writer, you know what i mean it's to, exactly to, to compare king and black to crossover is 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 isn't a great argument to be fair um and, and i guess that the whole point of 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 comics is that everybody likes different things and i guess if there was like four of us who love this comic every single issue, then it would be pretty boring and you know it would be pretty pointless. So um, I guess I guess for issue three, um it's kept me intrigued enough. And I think Scott you'd you'd use the word intrigued there. It's kept me intrigued enough to want to buy um issue three. Um but a lot of that's to do with spawns on the cover of the variant issue and these colours are amazing. Um and it's Donny Cates that's writing it. If it was anything else other than that I would have probably been dropped. Scott, do you want to counterpoint some counterpoints too? <laughs> I can't. I, I don't think I can counterpoint any counter counterpoints. Um, but I think overall, yeah, I enjoy. I enjoyed it. The pace was great, and it it jammed loads in, but it kept it steady. Um, yeah, uh, the characters they're developing nicely. We, we're getting. You know, we've got the main main plot that happened in uh, issue one and now we've got all these little little subplots of when are they going to be like you know picked off and tidied up and you know so what, what's going to happen with them the easter eggs are awesome i think that that in itself may be a selling point for people like people might just be reading this book purely to go Ooh, what can i spot you know it's like playing where's yeah. wally um, yeah, i think people like to be teased because i think there will be a lot of teasers Throughout yeah. this, this this first bunch of issues, yeah, um, 
yeah, I just overall, I think I it's just it. fantastic the, the way that everyone has developed so far and the way the story is going. I'm just having a good time. Um, I'm, you know, uh, you, you know, you know, I'm I'm new to this, so in total, I think ever event wise, I've only read like three events. You know, so this is uh, this is really fun. I'm really enjoying it. Um, you know, it's it's. I think it's great for every type of reader. Um, you know, if if you're new to this kind of stuff, you'll have a good time. If you're in, insanely experienced in all of the superhero stuff, you will have a different good time because you'll know what these little Easter eggs are in the background. Um, and you know, everyone here today has picked up different things, and um, and it's great. And you know, it's it's made me appreciate it a little bit more. Um, and it's even made Andy appreciate it a little bit more. I, I Absolutely. Hope. And yeah, and you know that's and, and, and I think that's maybe what Donny and Jeff and everyone is trying to achieve. Indeed. That you know they they cry they're trying to create that kind of um, discussion and like what is this? What is that? What does this bit mean? What does it this bit uh, you know what does it all mean? And uh, I think I think they're doing it really well. And it's just. I'm not taking it too seriously. I'm just taking it for what it is. And for me at the moment, it's just fun and intriguing. Uh, I'm really looking forward to issue three. Um, not because of the whole um, Spawn thing, because I've never read it, but purely more because of um, the cover, the, the the proper cover of issue three, the cover A, is it looks like a, a, gun, a Gundam uh, mech, doesn't it? Um, yeah, so that's going to be, that looks cool. There is a lot of sort of it looks like Shogun um, from Shogun Warriors as well. I think a lot of people suggest yeah. um, from, mm. from Marvel from back in the day. There are um, yeah, there's actually Cover Four as well has has a couple of um, sort of teases on it that they've released, but they've blacked out the silhouette of the characters. We'll have a quick look at that as well after Sean says his piece. Yeah, well, say your piece. Much, completely disagree with Andy, but everybody's entitled to their own opinion. Um, and black water. That's 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 the point of discussion, you know. So, but the I, I, yeah, it's a perfectly paced comic for me. Um, you know, it's got everything I kind of want from a comic. It's, you know, it's, it's superheroes, but it's got an indie twist. So, you know, it's not focusing heavily on the superheroes. It's all about the other characters. Your, you know, Ellie and Ryan and Otto and and then obviously the, the, the new characters that just brought in. Um, I, 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 I sort of focusing on what Andy said though about you know the coloring and the art in certain parts. That part you just you see there was like a sunrise or a sunset or whatever it is. You know, it's throughout the whole comic, the coloring sort of um, accentuates sort of the emotions throughout it. You know what people are feeling or what they're maybe the narrator's feeling the whole way through it. So I think it's you know and that contributes towards the writing. So for me, it's so well paced the whole way through. I just loved it from start. Well, I didn't love it, but I really enjoyed it from start to finish. And it leaves it completely open where there's so many questions, but it's not questions like, you know, what's going to happen next or whatever, you know, it does it. It's specific questions, you know, what's going to happen with, you know, regards to the prison camps? What's going to happen with Ava? Are they going to find out she's got the powers? Where did she get the powers from? You know, it's specific questions that actually I would like to know rather than just the, the normal question what's going to happen next you know it's it's keeps me interested the whole way through it and makes me interested in reading the next one Come on. which brings me to my next question sean what do you think is going to happen next <laughs> what, do you, what do you think issue three is going to hold very very quickly any any sort of initial thoughts after reading that what do you think is going to i think it might bring in the fact with uh, ryan's father at some stage i think because he's not in this ep in this uh, book so i think it's going to go to him a little bit and sort of expand on you know his background and how Ryan goes with him, and then maybe a little bit in Nelly. But I think I, I, that's just generally what I think the next one will be, and then it'll you know take the focus back to Ava and you know the rest of them after that. So could be completely wrong. Uh, Scott, issue three. Any? Uh... Uh, I uh, the only thing I was a bit gutted about this issue was the fact that the kind of Superman character that Ava drew at the end of issue one didn't pop up. Um, and to be fair, I'm not surprised, but I'm still a bit, uh, never mind. Um, but I'm, I'm hoping there's some more indication about that. Um, but I want some, I want some chaos. That's what I want. <laughs> That's what I want next issue. I want some chaos. I want, um, a hero to either like break out of the prison or someone to break them, uh, someone out. Um, I want, 
yeah, I want something to happen to Ryan. I just, I, I want a bit of, yeah, I want chaos. I want a bit of madness. I want a bit of um, turmoil and stuff like that. That's what I'm looking forward to. We've had the setup. We've had the introduction. We've had the setup. Now just kick stuff off. That's what I want next. Andy, what about yourself? What are you expecting then for issue three? I I want to love issue three. I, I really do want to. I, I want to come on this show and for us all to agree and be happy and harmonious. But I I just don't know yet. I'm I'm I want to see, as you said, Scott. I want to see a bit of chaos. I want to see a bit of action. I want it to be a quicker paced. Um, um, I, I don't want it to have a quirky start with artists getting killed. I want. I just want to see just aliens and superheroes and lots of things happening and just kick it off and let's see where it goes um, and then I'll be quite happy and I also want to buy the variant issue with Spawn on the cover Well quirky start I think you may get but I will say no more um, for me I think what you know, what I sort of think will happen is I think we will see um, I think I just thinking it might be too soon but say based on the preview sort of images at the end of the book um, it looks like we do have a meeting of Ellie and Ryan, so it looks like these threads might meet based on the cover, um, which was the uh, sort of big Gundam looking thing. I suspect that possibly this is maybe security at these camps. They've maybe borrowed tech maybe. from the mm -hmm. world as a um, defense in, in these camps, so I think we might see something related to that. Um, yeah, the... Um, I'm looking forward to it again based on the sort of preview um issues that have been released by image i'm really looking forward to it because they are doing something that is um i mean it's quirky for one obviously might like it but it's uh yeah it it, it just oh, it just like, directly references something without naming it which is just perfect it's another tease and i like it i like being teased um, speaking of teases this is what they released for the cover for issue four we have our three sort of main characters in the middle, but we have these characters in the background that have all been blacked out. And uh, you know, this is this is their, their sort of big tease. That kind of looks like Thanos with this, this side. It's that blue blue background color as well, the blue that we were talking about earlier on in yeah. the panels. Um, and and they're they're honest, through it. yeah, there was none of these characters that I could say for sure. That I have a good idea who they are. Um, I think Captain Hook is spawn. there. Yeah. <laughs> Who is it? Cap Definitely Captain Hook. Captain Hook. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, the only thing I can think of is this possibly on the left hand side of the page could be um, it's almost like a Nightcrawler bump sort of smoke effect, but it could be anything. Yeah, yeah look, look makes a good point. It's a homage to the giant size X Men cover. Yeah, yeah, it, it is, isn't it? Um, but yeah, so that's the sort of a wee tease they came out with. Um, but yeah, um, that's going to be it for our discussions. Does anyone have any sort of final comments they want to throw out there? No, I think we've covered everything. No, I'm really I'm just looking forward to issue three because I, I enjoy the different you know opinion that we got on this one. Because I know issue one, it was all we all sort of we, we liked it, we, um, but I like to sort of you know, I love this one. Sean liked it, Scott liked it, and he wasn't sold on it. And that's great. So that makes for a great, great discussion. I, I'm actually thinking of doing a spin-off show where it's just a full-on heated discussion where it's crossover versus King of Black. We just go out. <laughs> Content. <laughs> Money right there. Um, Secret Wars as well. <laughs> um, so, uh, I'm not reading Secret Wars. No, I've read, <laughs> four, I've read four of the books and four too many. Now I'm just going to move into the sort of last segment, which is Ooh. the giveaway, um, which I will now formally announce. So I have now put it live on Instagram, on my Instagram profile, with details on the giveaway. What you need to do is be subscribed to my channel, obviously. Go to Instagram, like the post that you'll find, and um, tag three, tag two friends, tag two friends in the post and um like you know follow my profile and subscribe and you will be entered to win this goodie bag of stuff i did put myself on big screen oh jesus oh, oh um nobody needs to see that so 
<laughs> what I have for you, lovely viewers, if you get in on this, is first of all, I'm going to give away issue one of Crossover. This is the Ryan Stegman cover. Um, so that's going to be in there. And then courtesy of colorist um, Supremo D. Conniff, who very kindly sent me a pack of stuff. Um, we're giving away some of it today. We'll do another giveaway for the next issue as well, or episode as well. So I'm saving some of that for later. We have an A3 crossover poster, which I will show you here. Let's back this off a little bit. So we have this A3 poster that is signed by D. Cunniff down there, as you can see. Cool. Um, so yeah. yeah. Sent directly from D, so don't don't worry about the authenticity of these. And we also have two large format prints from Redneck, which is another story for Image that um, da, um, Donny Cates had done, and D was the colorist on. So we have Redneck print here, That's signed cool. by. Pretty cool. That's a great one uh, as well. This one, Redneck um, print, and this is also signed by D, and this is signed by Donny Cates as well. So. Wow. Lovely That's big cool. print. Nice big A3 poster, which is folded. So it will be sent folded. So better day, I got it folded. And crossover issue one. This is the swag you can win. So subscribe to the channel, head over to Instagram, follow my profile on Instagram, leave a comment and tag two friends. And when we do episode three, we'll um, randomize the winner based on that. So I hope that was clear enough. I hope everyone understood that. Because I barely did. Subscribe, but, follow, like, tag two mates. That's it. That's it. Well, you should um, do it every single time. But, so um, yeah. I need to make your subscription public so I can just verify that you are subscribed, and then that way I get some subscribers. But um, yeah. So that's it. That's that's a brilliant giveaway. I would love to. Do yes. That stuff, that's but great. I'm not. And so uh, again, I was just going to say, James, uh, a big thank you to to D. Yeah. Because he thanks. tweeted us a couple of times today, and he's been a big supporter of the show. So, huge thanks to him. We like the show. We watched um, the last episode and um, thought it was quite entertaining. And he did say that some of our guesses and and, and things were, were were you know close, and some were far off. Oh. So, <laughs> um, but you know what? It was great that he that he sort of sort of gave it a wee view. Um, but yeah, that's going to be it. So, um, thanks again for joining us on Crossing Over with Comic Dale. We will have. Episode three, try to do it a week or two after issue three drops, which is going to be the second week in January, I believe. Um, so we'll try to pop something up there. And um, yeah, until then, join us in Panels and Pints Saturday. Anyone else want to promote anything, Andy? No, just thanks yeah. very much, Scott, for joining us. Yeah, You're welcome. Yeah. It's, it's been fun, it's been good. Um, yeah, we're going to be live on Saturday as well. The Panels and Pints Christmas special. Everyone's welcome. If anyone wants to come on, and come on. We'll talk comics. We'll show comics. We'll do a quiz. We'll have a wee unboxing. It's going to be fun. I love it. It's going to be fun. But until then, everybody, good night. And I'll see you on Saturday. Bye bye.